Yo, guys. Oh my God, these seats will never get comfortable to get into. It's it's a long time. It's been a long time since I've been filming. However, let's not let that get us down. Try and get these harnesses on. We are basically today off to your motor club, which is the same garage that I uh, went to before to fit the callovers. I also went there to do some other bits as well, but I can't remember because my brain's not working. I think it's the 7th of January today. Um, we've got a couple things to do um, that have been really bugging me. Over the last couple of days, I've been super busy, so I haven't been able to make videos. Now, what you're probably noticing is that my harnesses are attached to the floor, which isn't good and it's not safe, and it'll probably slap my back. Um, but what we need to do is get a half roll cage in. Don't worry, that's on the way, that is in progress. Also need to get a rear strut brace to go from the top of the struts and the top mounts. Um, you know, they basically connect and make it a little bit more stable. Um, all the same, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing bits. I don't know, don't know why I took that off, if I'm honest. It's been too long since I've made a video. Um, but no, I'm gonna go and wash the car quick and I'm gonna take it to your motor club and we are gonna go and assess the lower control arms on the back, the rear drop links and the anti-roll bar as I need to replace them. And we're gonna go and see why my car is making a horrible crunking noise. Now, like I said before, ugh, I literally have no idea what I'm doing. Um, like I said before, it's been a while since I've filmed and I've had a lot going on at home, you know, Christmas, New Year, and dealing with a few things. But all the same, just before I uh, jump into the intro, um, I'm gonna chuck the intro in now, but I do wanna show you something very funny that if you're not following me on Instagram, you would have missed. I pulled up at my dad's house uh, on Boxing Day, the day after Christmas. My parents are separated, so obviously we spend Christmas slightly separately. Um, I basically told him to get in the car and review the seats. Uh, he's quite well-spoken. You know, um, I suppose I'm well spoken to an extent, but I've, you know, I've, I've lived in Plymouth and, you know, I've grown up around here, so I suppose it's slightly different. Long story short, I'm gonna roll the intro right now and it's gonna be followed by my dad getting in this car. So we'll see you guys in a bit. Peace. <laughs> Just get in my car and try out my seats. Just, just get in there. Crying out loud! Look at this thing. It looks like a Tatra. <laughs> just get in. No, no, watch, watch. Now he's got to go. Go on, get in. What's this bloody blue? Get in. Oh my God! It's got a, a butt plug thing in the back here. Oh. Right. What am I doing? No, I'm just, just, yeah, just seeing if you'd react to the seats. To me, it, it feels like a... It's, uh, it's, it's a track-ready race car, it really is. Yeah, I mean, it, it feels like mutton dressed as lamb, to be honest. Mutton dressed as lamb? Are you taking it to the track? Dad, you... No. For an automotive fan, you should appreciate this engine. It's a Volvo 2.5 Turbo, it's a beast. It's not KY Jelly or lubricant, it's vape juice. Whiskey and speakers is the contents of my car right now. What's up guys? Now you've obviously just seen the clip of my dad sitting in the car at Christmas, but all the same, we are here now with Alan at your motor club, which to those of you that are new on this video, it's basically, basically a place with ramps that you rent super cheap and it allows you to do work on your own car. That's the best way I could describe it in short. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the car on the ramp and down on this side down here, it's either the lower control arms it's either the bushes of some sort, maybe even the bearings, possibly even the drop links, or the anti-roll bar, but either way, something is cranking, something is sounding horrible. So the plan of action was to come here, take a look at that, before I contact Andrew Fisher and order a new kit so we can get it installed, probably here as well, let's be honest. But all the same, um, Andy, as always, is gonna give me a hand. How was your Christmas, was it exciting? Yeah, not bad, all good. Yeah? I had a good time, tried to relax a little, but no. You pied me off yesterday. It. How dare you have a daughter's birthday? <laughs> no, yeah, it was a birthday. She, I couldn't, she would have killed me. All the same, should we, let's get the car on the ramp and uh, we'll go from there. I don't have the tripod today, so we're gonna have to put the camera down and come back no to worries. it, right guys? So we'll see you very shortly. Stay tuned, be patient, we'll see you in a bit. One second, I do want to film this going up, but you're going to be a YouTube personality in a minute. Yeah, People I'm are going sure. to start recognising you. Yeah, I would, I would love that. And I say, we did get a few guys come in off uh, the other industrial estate to recognise your channel and, you know, it is bringing, bringing in business. Go on, so. stop chatting shit and just get the car in the air. <laughs> it's exciting. I don't want the car to fall off, so just do it carefully, all right? He's done. He's done. The viewers will find it very funny. But yeah. So guys, like I said before, we're gonna have a look at the lower control arms on the back. I need to replace the anti-roll bar. Like I said, it's the choices are between hard race and a white line. 
but because there's so much crunking going on, obviously now it's so much stiffer on the suspension, it just makes sense to come in here and have a look before I order anything and regret spending lots of money. Before we have a look underneath, what do you expect the problem to be? I'm going to guess anti-roll bar and a drop link bush. Yeah, it's going to be bushes. Have a guess. Yeah, you can so, the suspension, the bushes are the next thing to take. Something yeah. is an absolute mess in here. I can, look, look at that. No, that's just, I don't know. Is it worth getting a crowbar out and just having a play yeah. because... No, if you have a look at these, have a look up at here, you see how okay. it's all, all the rubber's starting to flake away there. Okay, so, so yeah. chances are we get a pry bar in there, we'll get movement there. Chances are we'll get movement here. Mm -hmm. Chances are we'll get movement between these drop links as well, yeah. coming to the anti-roll bar. Uh, sometimes again... It's just a dirty mess under there. This, this yeah, weather is literally end. disgusting. And where the training arm comes forward. Yeah, well, it's, it's okay on that side. Uh, yeah. There's no noise coming from that side, but it's yeah. just... Honestly, there's something is coming from this this area here, which is horrible. Okay. So, uh, yeah, most probably is a lower arm. It's well, bushes what? in the lower arm. These and these. Mm. Yeah. Well, like I said, the roll bar is being replaced. They do come with the bushes as well. Apparently, it's it's on its way out. Um, guys, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I know what I'm looking for. So, we're going to do a couple tests now, just to try and work out what it is. Also, my front wheel especially on the right hand side is rubbing i can only assume it's the mud flap so if that is the case i'm going to take the front ones off but we're going to find out what the issues are today and get that all sorted <laughs> that looks fairly solid that one that's fairly solid that's too fairly solid. Yeah. yeah there's no noise coming from that side well, just purely focus on that link seems solid. It's a it's a hell of a noise. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. It already looks like it's rusty on the bottom of the BC shocks. I'll say it's just again uh, salt here down in the southwest, close to the coast. It's worth what we'll do is get a brush on it, mm. put some stuff on it to protect it. But yeah, it doesn't take long. I, I honestly it. don't know what the issue is. It's 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 a rather horrible noise. Yeah. I don't know, I think we have a good good look and make sure everything's nice and tight as well, make sure nothing's come. Yeah, I mean obviously we can loose. tighten things up, but yeah, it's yeah. um just made sense to come in here and have a look at what was going on before we went ahead and spent yeah, any yeah. money. Shocks are tight up at the top there as well. It's all so nice, isn't yeah. it? Uh, that kit is such a good kit. No, it is. It's just a shame that this weather makes everything look so filthy. It literally makes everything look gross. Yeah. It's definitely not the exhaust. Not oh, oh, that's the noise. That's that noise. It is, uh, it's the exhaust is catching. That is the noise. Oh my gosh, that is literally the noise. Okay, let's do some digging and see what we can Right, do. guys, I'm going to put the camera down just for two seconds. We're going to have a look, try and find out what it is, and then I'll come back to it in a second. At least we've, that's the noise, basically, that's every time we've been going over a bump, it just makes that horrible noise. Alan, I'm changing your name to Merlin, you damn wizard. <laughs> basically, I'm going to just try and show it in such a manner. You can see that exhaust bracket, and um, long story short, that bar, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, do you want to try and point to it so I can try and get yeah, the camera yeah. to focus so on it? Bar. One second, it's not, it's not focusing on the right bit. Yeah, so I'll, I'll try and show them from this side. Basically, uh, that bar comes directly off the exhaust and we're trying to bend it with a crowbar just slightly away from it so that it doesn't rub so much. But yeah, I mean, yeah. look, there's no noise now. You see? I am going to get a new system on this in January, well, this month. Go on, Alan. There you go, so... What was horrendous... It's still going up against this, though. Yeah, again, yeah. We can take that out, that looks pathetic. Way, yeah, Should we take it out? Should we just completely take it away? I say, again, the only there, protect the fuel tank and keep the heat off that, and keep the heat off that uh, charcoal canister. And what happened is over time... Charcoal canister, I've never heard of that before. Yeah, yes, yeah. so for the vents coming off, uh, so the fumes coming off the fuel tank are going to go into that charcoal canister and then 
every so often it will get sucked into the engine there's a purge line that goes into the engine so yeah it's just keep the heat off of that but they'll, they'll crack and they'll come loose and sometimes you'll hear that as a rattle but well check this out yeah. for a, a good day i come here pay for an hour on this and i end up saving 400 quids worth of lower control arms drop so. links i am going to do the anti-roll bar either way so now with that yeah. money saved what i'll probably yeah. do is the front and rear anti-roll bar yeah yeah what's Amazing. the front one like awesome. can you uh do, 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 do. Attack. we Right. I don't know where I'm looking. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm the same caliber of wizard as you. No, no, no. There we go. So, da, 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 da. it's just tucked on top of the arms here. If you have okay. a look, up by there, that's the anti roll bar. Okay. Yeah. Looks so, like a bit of a bitch to get out. Yeah, it is. You'd be the absolute yeah, it's something you'd have to come down, you know, or your, your beautiful engine uh, gearbox. Look in there, Rick, braided brake lines, BC cordovers. Yeah delicious getting calipers painted up yeah we need to get those calipers done and the yeah, intercooler yeah. i don't know if we should do it in the same oh, video yeah, but either yeah. way we need to take the front yeah, bumper off time, yeah, I think two, spray the intercooler two, put, a, two put a new logo on it make that look nice yeah okay. so much to do this year those are just the small mods yeah we've still got the air tech wide arch kit uh, big turbo new manifold and then um once all that's done forging very exciting yeah yeah, so obviously we've done that now. So why don't we assess why the wheels are rubbing? That could be something on Yeah, the that's it, yeah. That's a quick job. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. That's not possible. Try. No, it's okay, I'll hold the door open yeah. and you can climb up, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's quite difficult to get in there. And it's, yeah, it's quite uncomfortable getting in anyway. Uh, I'll give you the keys. And uh, you start her up, baby. Yeah. Anyway, what we're going to do, guys, is just find out why there's rubbing going on in here. Fire in the hole. So the rubbing was coming in here. Full, full lock. What was that? Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh. Do that again. What is that? What the hell? That's so weird. Should we come down and have a look? Because there's nothing wrong with a drive shaft. It drives perfectly and I don't... Yeah, I mean, can I come down? So we've basically stuck a video on the forum. We think it's the CV boots that are dry and are causing some form of rub. Yeah. So whoever it was in the forum, if you watched the video, thank you. That's a rubbery squeak there. Yeah, it is. And if, again, it's always good. Put your hands on it, you'll feel. you can feel that. Catch yeah, it is. It is. It's actually the rubber. I can see it. Yeah. So we can put some like silicon spray on there. You yeah, know, um, can I borrow your torch? Yeah, of course, it's just- I can literally see it happening. Speaking motherfucker. Oh God, I can't wait to paint those calipers. I've had enough of you and your wizardry. Yeah, so this side, we've not put any silicon on it. It's got a squeak. Can I put some silicon on you? Oh yes. Yes, baby. This one, it looks ugly. We'll clean it a bit more, but yeah. I don't care about that. That's that squeaking gone. That's no one cool. installs a drive shaft to have a look at it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Literally sounds gross. It does. Disgusting. It really is disgusting. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, we'll wipe off the excess and tidy it up and do the other sign. I think that's it. Two things. How cool would it be, right? Money. Do you remember in Harry Potter when Hermione and Harry were sat on the train? No. Oh, okay, so there was a scene where Hermione was sat on the train with Harry and he had some broken glasses. And she said, oh, Harry, your glasses are broken. And he said, I can't afford to fix them. To which she said, Oculus Repairus, and his glasses fixed, right? And I keep saying to Corley, my friend, how cool it would be to be like, Ford Focus, Oculus Repairus. And then everything fixes itself. All the bushes were brand new. All the oil was new. All the parts were new. That'd be so cool. Yeah. Anyway, um, I'm getting ahead of myself, let's be honest. Yeah. So squeaking creaky. Right, guys, so there you go. If you didn't know that already, you've learned something about your... Uh, Ford Focus, well, so have I. You see how annoying it is that this door comes to 180 degrees or 90 degrees. 
as you can see, what it's going to do, I'll show you, it's going to put a small dent in the door every time it comes and does, I'm not going to do it, but every time that piece comes and goes bang, it's basically going to create a dent. Anyway, that's, that's got nothing to do with what I'm about to do. Just thought I'd let you know. Um, all right, stay there. I'm going to take the seat out. I still haven't got this cross threaded bolt sorted but I'm going to lower it down one on here and try and lift it up one so it tilts back a little bit as it's a little bit high at the moment. Um, but what I'm going to have to do, unfortunately, you're going to hate me for doing it, is cut this out on both sides because it's stopping this going down to the right height. So we're going to molest the seat a little bit, get it out and make it a little bit more drivable as at the moment, me being six foot four, best part of 18 stone. It's not really fitting me the way that it should. Now I'll just give you a quick um, inkling as to what Corley sought me for Christmas. Those of you that know Macaulay, my friend. New aerial that actually fits. Flush, we're hay. And I also changed the dials down there. Look, pulled out the old ones and for a couple quid on eBay, got those nice ones in. So anyway, let's go and get the seat sorted. I'll stop confuffling and uh, we'll go from there. Right, I'm gonna feed the, um, the harness through first. I'm just gonna stick. Operation lower the bucket seat because George is too big for the car. Should we go down here? Yep, yep. So guys, um, like I said, cross-threaded bolt, so we haven't got that sorted yet. That's not the issue. But this one sat one too high, purely because the plastic's in the way. So we're gonna shred the plastic out both sides. That way, we can uh, also lift it, that up one and lower this down one. So that's the plan. We're gonna get started and uh, we'll see you guys in a brief moment. Guys, it turns out it was way easier than we thought. We don't have to slice anything. They're basically in two pieces attached together, a bit like a puzzle. So as you can see here, it's obviously restricted its ability to go down to the right height. So we can undo these now, slip them down one and slip these up one. Hopefully, yeah. it should work. Yeah. Okay, do you reckon it's worth having it tipping back? Probably a tiny bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so if we Just have them... Yeah. The thing is, it lifts it up a bit, doesn't it? It really yeah. does. Look, look at that. Okay, well, go, go to the lowest. Look at that height. Go to the lowest and seven, have it parallel. Then and it's then bolt upright. Say, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so let's do that then. Hi right, guys, I do apologise behind the noisy Dremel. But what I've done is I've placed these together, put them in here, marked out what needs to be cut out, and then we can then cut in this gap that will still fit together, but what it will stop is that happening. I just don't want it to break, all right? So, progress is being made. He's gonna get involved. Well, like so what we've managed to do is just dremel out a hole so that it fits in properly, allowing the seat to fit in properly. So we're gonna do the other side now, and then uh, we'll jump cut to me and Alan getting the seat back in. Oh, nice. And then we can jump in the car and see if it's made any difference. Guys, now is the moment of truth. I'm gonna get in the car and see if it's made any difference. So much better, honestly. Yay! <laughs> now earlier, I was having a protein shake in the car and I tipped it like this. And because I was so high up, the top of the protein bottle had got stuck here and I couldn't tip out the remnants. So now it's good. I feel like it's a normal ride height now. So I've sorted that out. So if you need to Dremel these pieces, I'd get on it if you're a tall guy. I'm gonna pull the camera now into the car. We're gonna go for a drive and see if this clunking has stopped in the back. All right, so we'll see you guys shortly. Thank you, love you, bye. Bye. Right, let's hope that my ABS light comes off first. So we're all done. I'm trying to uh, basically just get this ABS light off because we had the wheels moving and the car was in the air. Anyway, guys, uh, it feels all good. It feels good. There's no crunking. Yes, right, GC in the PT, go do the outro. And uh, actually, no, wait, I've already filmed a clip inside. So jump to that one, guys, we'll see you soon. So I came here with three problems and we are leaving with zero problems thanks to this absolute wizard. So like I said, if you're local to Devon, Cornwall, Plymouth, or frankly, in anywhere sort of nearby, simply come down here. How much do you charge? So yeah, just... basically roughs out about 10 pounds an hour. So yeah, 90 quid a day, 45 quid for half a day. You don't need a lift, it'll be 50 or 25. 
perspective. Yeah, so like I said, guys, at the moment, it's tipping it down with rain outside. It just makes so much more sense to come in here, be more involved with your car. You're going to then fall in love with it that much more. You're going to learn so much more. And obviously, you're not having those massive garage costs. Now, one thing I do find with Alan, he's super honest and he's got good banner as well. So he's good to hang out with. And there are going to be a lot of garages out there that to the novice might charge you a little bit more than you should be paying. So thank you again for tuning in. I'm sorry that I haven't uploaded until today, the 7th of January. Thank you very much. Smash a like if you haven't already. Let us know exactly what you think of both the business here and the car in the comment section below. We will see you guys in the next video. GC and the PT for all the outro. See you guys soon. Peace.